What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports and the Phillies. They got another win against the New York Mets as they move a game and a half above the Mets for first place as they beat them today by a score of 5-3. to three. Brad Miller getting two bombs. Odubo Herrera got a moonshot. And all the home runs that happened in this game. Yes, I'm also talking about that ninth inning. We will get into that later because I have a lot of complaints about that ninth inning. And it's rightfully so that everyone should have a lot of complaints about that ninth inning. Honestly, I kind of want to get the ninth inning out of the way. Or just get my complaints out of the way from the ninth inning because I have no idea why. I, I just don't understand why. Why is Joe Girardi bringing Lovera out there in the ninth inning? I don't understand. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's 5 nothing. You could bring in a random reliever to try to close the game out. This dude has no experience in the ninth inning. This dude sucks. Why is he coming in in the ninth inning? I don't care if it's 5 nothing. I don't care if it's 7 nothing. I don't care if it's 10 nothing. That dude should not be going out there in the ninth inning. I don't care if you're putting R.G. Bradley or Ian Kennedy out there on day a one-day rest. Not even. I don't know why Archie Bradley and Ian Kennedy aren't out there to begin with. Why are we putting Lovera out there in that situation where he's clearly not capable for? Clearly not. I just don't understand. I don't under understand why the fuck he's out there. Because allowing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs, not even recording a single out, that's fucking embarrassing. That is embarrassing. And I pray to God that Joe Girardi did not wake up the Mets offense. Thank God it was the bottom part of their order, not the top guys in their lineup. But still, Joe Girardi could have single-handedly woken up the Mets offense. And I really hope he did not, especially going into tomorrow's game with Zach Wheeler on the mound. Hopefully, he did not provide them any type of confidence. That's what pissed me off with this game. Because all of that shit could have been avoided. If you just brought in a guy like an Archie Bradley or an Ian Kennedy into the ball game, because with Zach Wheeler, hopefully it's guaranteed that he goes at least seven innings tomorrow, so you won't have to use that much from the bullpen. I just don't understand why an Archie Bradley or an Ian Kennedy just doesn't come out regardless. I don't know why you're putting this guy that has no experience in closing a game out in the ninth inning. I don't care if it's five nothing. He shouldn't be out there in the ball game. The dude sucks, and I hope he's on the next bus down to Single A. That's how bad it was. That's how fucking terrible it was, and it, it's embarrassing. It d shouldn't happen. That that entire situation in the ninth could have been entirely avoided. Entirely. Entirely. So, with the complaints out of the way. Really good ball game besides that. Really good ball game. <laughs> all the home runs in the world. Philly's got all the runs on home runs. Offense, I would say, kind of struggled a little bit. They didn't have that many opportunities with runners in scoring position. They were well, they they were one for seven, so they had their opportunities, but really the home runs. It, it basically timely hits once again. And thank God for Brad Miller just hitting absolute a moonshot, and then his second home run of the ball game later on. And then you get Odubel Herrera crushing the three run bomb later in that fifth inning when Brad Miller hit his shot. Then you get the besides Lovera in the ninth inning. Because I will say, Ian Kennedy came in, he walked one guy, but then he got the next got couple of guys out. So, I'll give it to Ian Kennedy there. He definitely did shut the door down in a very tough situation. But the rest of the bullpen, too, besides Lovera, really, really good. Really, really good. Ranger Suarez today. And the, the strike zone definitely on both sides was not good. It was definitely not good on both sides. The umpire, it was a very either tight strike zone, it was a wide strike zone, it varied. It really, really varied, and it wasn't consistent. And that's probably one of the main reasons why Ranger Suarez was not able to go at least the three, four innings that he hopefully was expected to go into this ballgame, just because of the strike zone. Because he had so many pitches that were so close, but were called a ball. And he got into those full counts because of those pitches that could have been called strikes, but were intentionally called balls. So... He only goes two and two thirds in this game, but he's still, I would say, pitched pretty good. And hopefully, his next start, he can figure out a way to get more deeper into the ball game with his arm more stretched out for the starter role. Then you get JD Hammer; he gets to win. He was really good out of the bullpen. He still has yet to allow a run this season since coming back up to the majors. Hector Neris pitched two innings; he was fantastic. Jose Alvarado; he walked one guy, but he was really good. Lovera we can forget about because he was trash. He was just absolute garbage. But then you get Kennedy. He was really good. He did allow a hit. He did walk a guy. But still, Ian Kennedy, I would say he came up big when it mattered. Especially those huge strikeouts to end off the ball game. 
J.D. Davis and Pete Alonso. Huge, 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 huge. But mainly going over this ballgame, the Mets, they had their chances early on as well. But once again, if you're going early on into the ball game, the Mets, once again, they don't have they struggle with runners in scoring position. They get a couple of batters in the first inning, they can't get anything going. Second inning, you get a one, two, three inning from Ranger Suarez. Then you go into the third inning. Okay, they they try to get something going here, but with Ranger Suarez, he gets some walks. The pitch count's getting up there. Eventually, JD Hammer does come into the ball game and he retires the side there. Go into the fourth inning, they can't get anything going. You're also getting some nice defensive plays too, but Alec Bohm once again. There's just uh, Alec Bohm with the defensive plays at third base. They were like there was there was one play in this ball game where he bobbled the ball, but he managed to get Pete Alonso out because he was slow as molasses. But he barely got him out by like a wide, like barely an inch of a margin. It was that close of a play. But in the very next inning, he did he made did the same exact thing, but it turned into a error base hit, whatever you want to call it. And just Alec Bohm in those situations, especially on third play, base, he's still very unplayable. But it, but the result right now is. Now, you don't have Gene Segura, who got hit in the face later in this ballgame. He also got hit on the finger, too. But Joe Girardi did say that the x-rays came back negative, and they're going to check back in with him tomorrow morning just to see how the finger is feeling. But you don't have Didi Gregorius now, and you still don't have Reese Hoskins with the groin situation, so you don't know how much longer he's going to be out for. It's uh, not the best time for these guys to be going down with injuries, even though it's not their fault, but it's just the inopportune time at this point for some of these guys to be going down, especially some of our topper guys, to be going down with injuries. Reese Hoskins has had the groin injury for a little bit. Didi just came back from the IL stint with that elbow problem, and I think he got hit in that exact same elbow that he was having any issues with on his IL stint. So hopefully for him it's not very long term, and hopefully with this Gene Segura situation, thankfully the x-rays are negative. You're just basically going to wait and see if he is ready to go tomorrow. So hopefully that comes, I would guess, to light. Hopefully it comes better for this team. I have no idea. So hopefully you could just get something positive for tomorrow. Even though it basically the, the entire week has been positive. Seven straight wins. You're now a game and a half above in first place, again, above the New York Mets. The, National, the Braves also lost today to the Nationals as well. So they're, they're now two games behind you. So you're, you're getting some type of breathing room. There's some positives to look into this as well. And still, this team, right now, they're having that killer instinct. Even though it was a very, very, very stressful ninth inning, they found ways to, Ian Kennedy found a way to get out of it. So thank God for that, you go into the fifth inning, and that was the huge inning for the Phillies. Brad Miller, he leads off the inning with an absolute missile because the offense, they really couldn't get anything to Miguel so far. He, he was dealing, but once you got into that fifth inning, there the umpire, I think, started to get into his head a little bit. The strike zone started to get into his head. He was There were a lot of close pitches that could have been called strikes for him too, and the umpire just did not call it. And you can definitely tell that his... Just his energy, his appearance, his, just his mood drastically changed just because of the umpire most likely frustrating him, which is very understandable because it's been happening on both sides today. The umpire strike zone was just, was just not that good. It was either too tight, it was too wide, it was just a very frustrating strike zone for both teams. But thankfully, Brad Miller destroyed that home run to make it a one nothing ball game. Alec Bohm then doubled, yet Ronald Torres, he eventually grounded out, but Travis Jankowski, he does work a walk. And then you get Nick Maton, which on this flyout was a very questionable situation because... Alec Bohm, did did they expect that the ball was going to travel further? It would look like it was just a routine fly ball, and you don't get the tag up at second base to go to third, so now you're just at a first and second situation with Adubo Herrera with two outs. But thankfully, he shut everyone up because first pitch, he golfed it into the second deck, making it four to nothing. My God. And the bat flip, everything at Reese Hoskins, reaction once again on the dugout, just everything. My goodness. My, my goodness, everything was just good. Then you get Hector Naris coming in for his inning. There you get the error by Alec Bohm, but he manages to get out of that inning. The Phillies can't get anything going in the sixth. Hector Naris coming back in for another inning. He gets the one, two, three. Dominic Smith eventually did come in the pitch hit, though. He had a hard fly ball, but thankfully it was an out. Going to the, seventh, going to the bottom of the seventh inning, Phillies... 
that's when uh, Gene Segura got the hit by the pitch into his finger plus the face. So the Phillies really can't get anything going there. Eighth inning, you got Jose Alvarado out there on the mound. He gets the first two strikeouts, but then once again, the strike zone most likely frustrated him a little bit. He walked J.D. Davis, but then he eventually got Javier Baez to fly out to Travis Jankowski. And then you go into the eighth inning for the Phillies, get Brad Miller. Honestly, I don't even know how the hell he got this pitch over the wall, but he crushed it to the opposite field, barely got over to the wall, and it becomes a 5 nothing lead for the Phillies. So you get your insurance going in the ninth. So you got Mauricio Lovera coming out for the ninth. Works a full count to Michael Conforto. Home run. Works a full count to Jonathan VR. Home run. And you're sitting there just thinking, oh no, uh, is the, are the Mets waking up? What? You're thinking to yourself, why the fuck did Joe Girardi bring in Lovera? Why isn't someone up in the bullpen? Or why wasn't someone up in the bullpen like an Archie Bradley or an Ian Kennedy just to close the game out? Why is this guy coming into this situation? He shouldn't be in this situation to begin with because, you know, the very next batter, James McCann, barely gets the ball over to the right field wall and it's a back-to-back-to-back home runs. And it's suddenly a 5-3 to three ball game and everyone is clenching, everyone is frustrated, everyone is panicking because of the meltdown from Lovera on the mound. And you couldn't take him out of that ball game because of the three p- batter limit. So you were stuck in that situation with those three home runs. Thankfully, he was able to take him out after that. In comes Ian Kennedy. He does allow a single to Kevin Pillar. But then he gets Jeff McNeil to pop up. He does walk Brandon Nimmo. But he gets two huge strikeouts. Pete Alonso, heat right down the middle of the plate. Can't catch up to it. J.D. Davis, heat right down the middle. Can't catch up to it. And the Phillies win the ball game. Five to three. Man. That end of the game did not have to be like that. It was so avoidable. It was incredibly avoidable. I have no idea why it had to go like that. Why I just don't understand why he's in the ball game. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't care if it's 5 and nothing. I don't care if it's 7 and nothing. Bring someone in that experience that can close the game because apparently that guy, he, he sucked. He sucked. There's no way fans are butts about it. No way fans are butts. So... Earlier on, I went basically over the pitching. Everyone knows what happened. Ranger Suarez, like I said, he pitched good. He went two and two-thirds, three walks, four strikeouts. J.D. Hammer, he gets to win two and a third innings, two hits allowed, three strikeouts. Hector Neris, two innings, two strikeouts. Jose Alvarado, one inning, one walk and two strikeouts. Lovero, we don't need to bring him help because he didn't record an out. He allowed three home runs. And then Ian Kennedy, he finished off the ninth inning. He went the full inning, allowed one hit, one walk, and struck out two. For the lineup... Philly, so Dubal Herrera in the leadoff spot went two for four with three RBIs on his three-run bomb. Gene Segura, he goes one for three in this ballgame. He eventually did get taken out later on, and Luke Williams went into second base for him, so hopefully he is able to play tomorrow. We'll just have to wait and see. Bryce Harper, he went over three in this ballgame with a walk, so yeah, Harper, he had some hard-hit balls. They just ended up being caught, so I'm not going to harp on Bryce Harper for that much. <laughs> harp on Bryce Harper? Ha, <laughs> funny. JT Romito, he goes 0 for 4 in this ballgame, two strikeouts. Brad Miller, huge ballgame, 2 for 4 with two bombs. Alec Bohm, he goes 2 for 4 with a run scored and a strikeout. Ronald Torres, he goes 1 for 4. Travis Jankowski goes 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. Ranger Suarez, he didn't get an at bat. Nick Maton had an at bat. JD Hammer had an at bat. It's funny, too, seeing JD Hammer at the plate. He's like trying to do this, like. You know, like, pro stance, like, dude, what are you going to do out there? You ain't going to crush a ball 500 feet. That ain't going to happen. And so, Luke Williams, Nick Mayton, they both go 0 for 1 as well. Runners in scoring position, the Phillies were 1 for 7 with 6 runners left on base. So, you get two wins out of this series. Like I said earlier, well, yesterday's video, actually. All I'm asking for is to win the series. All I'm asking for is for two. A sweep would be the icing on the cake. Well, you have that chance to apply the icing on the cake tomorrow when you have Zach Wheeler going up against Taiwan Walker. 
The Phillies, their first couple appearances against Taiwan Walker, they definitely did struggle against him. But Taiwan Walker definitely has been struggling as of late. He's been getting beat around the bush a little bit. So hopefully the offense, some other guys can wake up here. Maybe Bryce Harper from his off day today. Maybe he can have a big day tomorrow. Same thing, JT Romuto, if Gene Segura is in the lineup tomorrow. Who knows, maybe Reese Hoskins could be in the lineup tomorrow. You just never, never know. Maybe Brad Miller can <laughs> work, build off of his uh, two-home run game. You never know. But we do have a very big chance to sweep tomorrow, which is going to be very huge if we can pull that off. Because if you look at the standings, Phillies, they sit at 58-53 and 53 in first place. I love saying that. I love saying first place Phillies. Seven game winning streak. They are a half game above the New York, a game and a half above the New York Mets, actually, who are 56 and 54. They are two games ahead of the Atlanta Braves, who are 56 and 55, who lost the Washington Nationals today. So you got a little bit of breathing room right now. One, if you can win tomorrow, they'll be two and a half games above the New York Mets, and they'll just have to wait and see what happens with the Atlanta Braves. So the Phillies right now, they they still they control their own destiny. They definitely do. And if we look at the rest of the week, going after tomorrow's game, you got the Dodgers, you got the Reds, and it's Aaron Nola slated to be the first game on the mound against the against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And I would assume Tuesday's game is gonna no Wednesday's game is gonna be Kyle Gibson. So you're gonna have Nola and Gibson. The first two games against the Dodgers, you'll have the Thursday game, which right now is to be determined because Chase Anderson is on the IL now, so you don't know who is going to start that third game. Are we going to run Matt Moore? Are we going to run Vince Velasquez again? Bullpen game? I have no idea. Absolutely have no idea because then I'll assume for the Red Series, it'll be Ranger Suarez, Zach Wheeler, then I would assume Aaron Nola for the Sunday game. So that's what I'm just assuming right now. So, you win this game, you win the series, try to sweep tomorrow, because that'll be huge for momentum, huge. You got your ace on the mound tomorrow and Zach Wheeler going up against his former club. It's going to be huge, it definitely will be. Sadly, I won't be able to watch the game tomorrow because I will be down the shore, but I'll definitely keep myself updated. So, that's going to do it for this video, everyone. What are your thoughts on this game, your thoughts on everything that happened, Brad Miller's home run, Odubel Herrera's home run. That ninth inning. That ninth inning. I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I have to say about that. <laughs> so definitely leave those thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the Panda Lines, which I'm a part of. The links are down in the description below. Don't forget to check out the links to Broads Media, the Florida Pod Merchandise website, and also Flyers Nitty Gritty. All that good stuff is down in the description below. Go and check those out out and the most important thing you can do is smash that subscribe button and just do it that's all i can say <laughs> just hit that subscribe button it'll be a great support to me and thank you for tuning into this video everyone and i will see you next time